I'm in red form In a red state, such a red case on a red song In a shared space with my shareholders cause we share a bond Spiritual healthcare, that's real self-care, you won't care for I got my Mets hat on to the back Y'all already know where we going with the stats Any artist that's talking garbage and try to curse us Y'all follow a wave and do whatever's current I follow his ways, I know my turn is coming Welcome to New York Giants Full Access Add it to the cart and we got you and That's it man, go purchase Big Pass Sports Talk merch and support the family man and welcome to big pass sports talk thank you for your support what's going on youtube instagram twitter all platforms welcome to another episode of new york giants full access with your boy big pat sports talk and today's episode is why new york giants fans are a little angry and labeling Kayvon thibodeau as a bust already in his second season. I'm actually going to give some insight of why they're saying that. I'm not saying that you're you're correct, but I do get where you're coming from, and I'm going to explain to you why. But let's listen to a clip from Mr. Kayvon Thibodeau, and then I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and give you guys some truths about Mr. Kayvon Thibodeau. So let's listen to the video. Let's get to it. Go, so that was the last play. So I think when you play this game, you start to realize, and I'm only answering it like this because I know that there's videos and there's always narratives put out. But when you're in a situation where the fate of the game lands on one drive or one, you know, situation, and you're kind of those people, right? The defense are the guys who are looked to, to to answer that, the only person I look to is God, right? So I'm sitting in that moment and I'm praying and I'm kind of, I guess you would say meditating and seeing that, visualizing what I'm, we're gonna do as a team to go out there. So for me, it's kind of like, there are too many people that wake wakes up and wants to put negativity out there. And it's like, for us to come back and win a game, it's nothing but positive. And for a defense, you know, everybody just wants to be able to make that play when, it, when the time does come. So I think it's more of a visualization and a meditation thing that, you know, hopefully I don't ever have to answer something like that in the future. So, as you heard, which I kind of agree with him, you got to put out the negative Nancy attitude and the negative Nancy criticism and go out there and do what you do. If you have to sit off to the side, which he was, which uh, the cameras caught him sitting off to the side, I think he was meditating right there on how to go out there and make that play to where we can get the victory, which we did get the victory, 31 to 28 over the Cardinals. And they saw that and said that he was pouting and not being part of the team because you've seen the team over there celebrating after we got another touchdown. He was to the side sitting by himself. And I really do believe that he was thinking to himself over there, how can I make this play and how can I – you know, help my team win this game. But let's get to the nitty gritty of the video. What the people are complaining about is your impact on the game. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> say this, not saying that he's not a hard worker, but it's your preparation. When you look at top edge rushers in the league like a Von Miller or Nick Bosa or TJ Watt or any of those top guys in the league, Aaron Donald. You have to understand what you're looking at. And that's a pretty much a crazed individual. And what I mean by that is they go so hard on their craft every year especially in the off season. If you go look up workouts like Aaron Donald or TJ Watt or the Bosa brothers, you will see an absolute crazed individual. They're working so hard. They're putting themselves to the brink after every workout in the off season. They're working on certain situations. So when it comes to 
seeing that in the regular season game against somebody they know how to defeat it they're always two steps ahead of you and when you look at those guys you see it when you look at tj watt when he plays with the Steelers, you just know that he's going to come up and make a play sooner or later it's like those dudes just come at you, come at you, come at you, come at you. And you look at him like, man, he's just playing at a different speed than everybody else. He's playing at a different strength than everybody else. He's just playing at a different passion. And he's just ahead of everybody else when he's on the field. When you look at a Michael Parsons, much as I hate to admit it, he's no Lawrence Taylor. But he's no Lawrence Taylor yet. When you look at Michael Parsons, as much as I'm, I hate Dallas, when you look at Michael Parsons, you know that's the man. You know that at any given moment, he could wreck a game. You know at any given moment, he can make life for your team a living hell. When you look at Nick Bosa while he signed a $30 million contract, it's just there. When you look at it, you see it. It's like boom, 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 boom. He just keeps coming at you. No matter what you throw on a double team, triple team, doesn't matter. He's going to find a way to get to your quarterback and make a play and make an impact on the game. Even if he doesn't get to your quarterback, you having to allocate three to two to three people to him, that impacts the game. And right now, you just don't see that with Kane Von Thibodeau. And to be honest with you, you really don't see that with any players on this team. Except for... Daniel Jones, he puts in the work. He might not be as talented as a Patrick Mahomes and everything. That's why it doesn't look like those guys. But he puts in the work. Saquon Barkley, why you get so excited seeing that dude? When you look at Saquon Barkley's workouts, you see a dude that's pushing himself to the brink every offseason to be the best that he can be. That's the reason why he could go to the line of scrimmage and spin off, run to the outside, run to three, two, three people. And get a first down and, and, and put us in field goal range to kick the field goal. It's just unfortunate. Injuries just seem to find him. But he's like that. Adrian Peterson, when you look, you, it's just certain people when you look at him, it's like, yeah. You know who I saw that in? In that draft with Kayvon Thibodeau? And who I absolutely would have drafted over Kayvon Thibodeau? Aiden Hutchinson. And I was going back and forth with my co-founder, G Nation Inside Sport. I said, that dude right there, he's going to be something vicious when he gets to the league. Because he just has that work ethic. He just has that, that passion to know that I'm going to keep coming at you. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a bloodthirst. It's like a bloodthirst for competition. Like two war, he, like He's like a warrior out there willing, trying to take over your kingdom. And he's going to keep coming at you. I don't see that with Kayvon Thibodeau, not just yet. And I know you're not putting in the work like those guys. I know for a fact that you're not. Because if you were, you're too talented not to be as dominant as those guys or even more dominant. You're more talented than them. But you're not the big kid on the block anymore. This is the NFL. And I'm not saying that you have no work ethic. That's not what I'm saying. I think you're doing a little bit of work in the offseason. You're making yourself sweat a little bit, but there's a certain level of work that you got to do when you want to be great. When you want to be great, you're working on certain scenarios. You're pushing yourself to the brink. You're learning new things every day because you know your competition is learning as well. Oh, another player that I see it in on this team, Dexter Lawrence, he has it. Andrew Thomas, he has it. That's why they're all pros. None of our edge rushers has that TJ Watt type attitude. T just, just to outwork you. When you have talent and you put in that amount of work, you get Hall of Fame. Antonio Brown, before he went crazy, he, he could have been the best receiver of all time because no, his work ethic was un matched he had Jerry Rice type work ethic with the talent to back it up so that's what they're not seeing and, and the normal fan just 
labels it, oh, he's a bust. Nah, he's not a bust. He's just not great. Not yet. But you can see it with an Aiden Hutchinson. He might not be as talented as Kayvon Thibodeau, but he's out working him. T.J. Watt, he learned it from his brother, J.J. Watt. Their work ethic is ridiculous. They're working on everything. They're working on hand movements. They're working on burst. They're working on lateral movement. They're working on strength. They're working on core. They're working on all type of things. They're working on, if I get double team, I'm going to do this. If I get triple team, I'm going to do this. If I see this left tackle and he's planting his foot like this, I can use this move to get to the edge and get to the quarterback. If I know that when I when I engage this guy one time and I feel that his core strength is not it, I could bull rush him and get to the quarterback. I know that when he sets his feet like this, I could use the spin move to get to the quarterback. They, It's like the computer in their head just keeps going. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's what he's lacking. And in order for you to keep a, to avoiding answering questions like these and having interviews like these, these, Mr. Thibodeau, put in the absolute pain, grueling work in the off season. Those dudes that you want to be like, like the Stray Hands and like the Bruce Smiths and the Lawrence Taylors. Hell, the people that you, your peers today, Michael Parsons, TJ Watt, Nick Bosa. Those dudes are working, bro. Aaron Donald, those dudes are working. I can guarantee you those dudes can tell you many relationships that they've lost, many friends that they've lost because they're so determined to get better at their craft that they lose people because they can't understand the work that they're putting in to be great they can't understand the work to be putting in to where you can get those tv sponsors and everything that you talk about they're putting in the work man and i'm not just talking about just your normal work Oh, I got a dietitian. I can do that. No, these dudes are putting in the work every day. Training camp is nothing to these dudes to what they put themselves through the all season before they get there. When everybody else is on vacation, they're putting in the work. They may take a week to rest, but then they're just putting in the work. Their vacation is going out there to open fields, going through cones, jumping over beams, using handwork going to ufc things and, and and getting your handwork together karate training getting limber all of those things that they do in the off season bro if you want to be great you're going to have to be a little bit crazed and the perfection of your craft that in that it never ends for them it never ends they're going to keep going, they're going to keep going, they're going to keep going, they're going to keep going until the Most High tells them you can no longer do it anymore. Your body will no longer allow you to do it anymore. But until then, they're going to be great. They're going to continue to put up 14, 15 sacks a year because it's expected. Because they know you're not outworking me. The only way you're going to beat me is if I'm off my game that night. Send, send your best tackle. Send your best tackle and guard to double team me. Chip me if you have to. I'm going to get through him, and then I'm going to get through you, and I'm going to go get your quarterback. And if I'm not getting your quarterback, I'm making his life a living hell. That's what they're not seeing with you, Kayvon Thibodeau. And the fact... It makes it even worse because they've seen it, because you've done it. That game against Washington was an absolute masterclass. But you want to be great, you're going to get that every night. Not saying it's going to be a two or three sack night every night, every night, but it's going to be a pressure to where they're looking at you and they have to game plan for you. Because if they don't, they know you're going to wreck the whole game. 
That's what make Michael Parsons get the love that he gets and he deserves it. I hate to say it. He's a cowboy, but he deserves every bit of it. Because the work that he's put it in. He's not just uberly talented. He puts in the work like he's a tryhard. Could you imagine if we go to basketball real quick and Patrick Beverly was 6'8"? With a seven-foot wingspan and can shoot threes like Kevin Durant, Patrick Beverly will be one of the greatest players in history. You got to put in the work like you're one of the guys that barely made it. That's what they do. They put in the work like a tryhard. But have Hall of Fame talent on top of it. And that's what they're not seeing. So that's why they're labeling you a bust. And I'm not agreeing with them. But I do understand where they're coming from. And hopefully this lets those guys understand what they're saying. And if you don't start performing, if you don't start putting in the work, their talk is going to be validated. It's too late for this season. But if next offseason you're not coming in and you're not showing that dominant force that you can be, you're gonna make the you're gonna make the sayings right, bro. You're gonna be doing a lot of interviews like these. This is your first taste of the New York media. And if you continue on the trend that you're doing, New York is not gonna be the place for you, bro. They're gonna run you out of town. Put in the work. And I'm not just talking about normal work. I'm talking about, man, I feel like I'm finna pass out type work in the offseason. Because when you do, you're going to be one of the best players in the league. You have that type of talent. But you got to put in that pain grueling work that work that you don't want to do that day that work that it's like man look at this dude this dude is crazy that's exactly what people say when they watch tj watt play they, this dude is crazy that's what they say about michael parsons when he played man this dude is crazy what is wrong with this man look at him he's a wild man out there yeah and that's why they're going to have gold jackets at the end of their careers. But I just made this video to let the people know that he's not a bust. But I do understand where you're coming from. And what you see in a top five pick, you see that in Nick Bosa. You see that in TJ Watt. You see that in a lot of players. And that's what you want to see out of Kayvon Tebedo, and I definitely understand. But you got to give it time. But Mr. Thibodeau, the clock is ticking. Because this is New York, and patience is not a virtue. So, that's my explanation on why New York Giants fans are labeling Kayvon Thibodeau a bust. Hopefully you understand what I said throughout this video. It's just some, just some little validation, little things that I see, little insights that I see on players. Thank you for watching. This has been New York Giants Full Access with your boy Big Pat Sports Talk. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that big blue join button. If you want to talk your talk with big pass sports talk or join the big blue crew and until the next episode you know what it is man peace